Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to Calling to Know God. You've got questions. God has answers. So pick up your telephone. Give us a call. I'm your host, Brother Ken Fob. Good evening and welcome to Calling to Know God, airing live from the great city of Baker, Louisiana. I'm your humble servant leader, Brother Ken Fob. Calling to Know God seeks to provide encouragement and very valuable information to you, our viewing audience, while at the same time attempting to address both simple and complex issues of everyday life from a biblical perspective, but given and supported by the Word of God. Calling to Know God is an outreach resource of people of potential and purpose in Christ, or in other words, Papa Pick. Papa Pick is not a church, but it is a ministry of helps to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. Now, later in this show, I'll be joined by a panel of guest ministers. We have a great show tonight, and we're here to answer your questions on any topic. Now, given the fact that we're ending up uh, finishing out the month of February, which is the month of heart health, according to the Medical Association, the, uh, the, the month of Valentine's for the lovers and all of that, you know, the month of red, then uh, the last couple of episodes we've been dealing with the subject of marriage. And so we definitely will be addressing that, and you will really appreciate the panel we have tonight specifically deal with it. Now, after the show, we'll be posing, uh, posting rather, this episode online. You can follow us at youtube.com forward slash calling to know God or at papapic.com uh, multimedia or by going to the WLFT TV uh, website. Okay, we want you to encourage your friends, spread the word about this ministry uh, to find those resources. In fact, tonight I believe is episode number 41. And we want to thank you for being there, for giving uh, uh, an expression of a need to have this type of programming that the Lord has provided and the Lord has supported because he's hearing the hearts and cries of people who desire to know him. And our mission here is to impress upon the body of Christ as well as unbelievers that from the moment you came from, from your mother's womb, as far as God is concerned, there's a call on your life to come to him and to get to know him. And it includes salvation and much more even beyond salvation, becoming a mature son or daughter of God. Now, I want to also start the program by making a couple of statements concerning the word of God. The word of God is authentic, it is original, creative, and effective. Every word of God is pure, according to Proverbs 30 and 5. God's word is original, according to John 1.1, 1, 1. and in the book of Colossians we see this. God's word is creative, according to Hebrews 11 and 3, because the Bible says, uh, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So nothing that we see in existence came into existence outside of God himself first exercising faith and God himself speaking his word. Amen? Now, the word of God deals with the three parts of you and me, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus himself said in Matthew 4, 4, that the word of God nourishes your spirit. The book of Romans 12, 2, the apostle Paul says that the word of God, as we continue to feed upon it, will literally begin to renew our minds. And Proverbs 4, 4, 420 rather through 22 says that the word of God will literally minister health to all of your flesh. Amen. Now we're getting ready to go to our first break. We're going to go to that break early for the simple reason that after that initial break, and we want you to pay close attention to the, the commercial, the ad, uh, consider supporting Papa Pick and all of his endeavors, calling to know God is only one of them. But we want you at the end of that first commercial break, there's going to be about a seven minute piece at the courtesy of the Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, an excellent organization of Christian attorneys and network from across the country based in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, their courtesy, which talks about the state and the negative impact uh, upon a society when uh, marriage is attempted to be redefined and family is redefined according to the laws of man. And then after that, I'll be ready to introduce our panel. Amen. So we're going to get ready to go to that first break. Again, you're watching Calling to Know God. Get ready to pick up your phone as well. Pick up the phone and dial 225-774-7790. Looking over there to make certain I give you the right phone number. We have people here to answer your phone. 
calls, and we will take your questions and address them along with our great panel, and I can't wait to introduce them to you tonight. We'll see you at the other side of the break. Hello there. I'm Ken Fowle, president and founder of People of Potential and Purpose in Christ. Public is not a church, but it is a ministry of help to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. I want you to consider the following information, and then please prayerfully consider partnering with Papa Pig as we support many, many others. God bless you today. Since 2003, the Lord has been doing extraordinary things through Papa Pig with its mandate, mission, and vision to provide help and support to the body of Christ, people in need, ministries, and service organizations through spiritual retreats and advances, youth summits, summit conferences for servant leaders from all walks of life, critical conference panels, scholarships for students, prayer and intercession trainings, books, worship resources, prayer and intercession through worship demonstrations, and the weekly live TV outreach known as Calling to Know God. Prayerfully consider supporting unity in the body of Christ with your gift of any size and partner with Papa Pick. Visit papapick.org and give today. Fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there, you know, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change, and that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change, and again, I, I don't think it should exist. Marriage, not just your marriage, the institution of marriage, the lifelong union of a man and woman as husband and wife personal promise with a public purpose. Here's how it works. There's a variety of relationships between adults out there. Boyfriend, girlfriend, same sex, polygamous, or multiple partners. The public purpose is why the law recognized marriage as an institution of husband and wife. It sends a social message about the importance of a dad and mom. Though a husband and wife will not always have children, that doesn't change marriage. Or the profound implications on society from those who do have children. Only a mother and father can uniquely provide children with separate, distinct, and irreplaceable parenting gifts. The more children that receive those gifts and that guidance over time, the more that society benefits, like reduced criminal behavior, a decrease in high school dropouts, less children in poverty, fewer women exploited, and children neglected. And that's only a few of the many benefits. Nothing better guarantees those societal benefits than a married mom and dad, which is why marriage serves a unique public purpose. When marriage is weak in a society, those benefits turn into burdens. They become problems that government will have to deal with one way or another. That's why government has always had an interest in making marriage strong. And today, lots of things are weakening it, from adultery to no-fault divorce laws. But the latest challenge is from same-sex activists who seek to redefine the very institution, which will send a new message, making dad and mom an option, undermining the needs and benefits marriage was designed to give society. And if marriage is redefined, why shouldn't other options be included? Polyamory, it's called, in which multiple lovers live together openly under one roof. A woman and two men. No one knows exactly how many polygamists live in this country. A husband, three wives, and 18 children. The head of this plural household, meet Michael Colley. We would like to start having the debate nationally about polygamy. Same-sex activists tell us ending the exclusion from marriage would strengthen families and would take nothing away from anyone else. Except it hasn't in places where it's already been tried, like Scandinavia, Spain, or Canada, where redefining marriage did nothing to improve falling numbers of people getting married and having children. Redefining marriage did not strengthen marriage in society. But this isn't just about redefining marriage. It's about reordering society and culture. Because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change, and that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. And again, I, I don't think it should exist. 
We're talking about a new bill that's now making its way through our state legislature. It would allow judges to legally recognize more than two parents for a child. But what about children who have more than one set of parents? Well, my husband and I are co-parenting our two daughters with a couple, a lesbian couple. I'm the biological father for both kids, and one of the moms is the biological mother for both daughters. A valley man pregnant delivering three children. Beatty was born a woman, Tracy, but later underwent a sex change. Governor Brown though has just 12 days left to decide whether to force public schools to teach gay history. This mom, who did not want to be identified, got the flyer from school last week announcing that this Friday would be gender bender day. Boys dress up like girls, girls dress up like boys. Gallaudet University has placed its chief diversity officer on paid leave because she signed a petition that gave Maryland voters a say on same-sex marriage. And as you see there, that is Phyllis Burgess, the woman that we've just identified, and she walked there holding, as you can see, a large cross. Within just moments, it didn't take long for that cross to be pulled out of her hand, and the woman standing by as the cross gets trampled. And Gay right activists are targeting a Lakewood cake shop Tom, protesters would like to see this cake shop behind me boycotted completely. Philip says he takes every cake personally and won't make a cake for an event he doesn't believe should even exist. Atlanta pastor Louis Giglio tapped to give the benediction that the president's second inaugural is now pulling out of the festivity because of a firestorm over his mid-1990s sermon on homosexuality. Well, a same-sex couple decides to give their 11-year-old son hormone blockers they want to, to give him more time to decide if he wants to be a boy or if he wants to be a girl. The decision to allow a 45-year-old transgender student to use the women's locker room has upset many parents and faith-based groups in Washington. Now, the student who identifies as a woman but has male genitalia is being allowed to use a locker room shared by females at Evergreen College as well as the high school girls swim team and the children's swim academy. Redefining marriage, reinterpreting history, reinventing gender, and rewriting freedom. That's why Alliance Defending Freedom has been on the front lines of this issue with our allies. Because for those who wish to change marriage, their purpose has always been about changing society. We have to change the minds. We can't expect any one group to be better on our issues than any other group. We live in a homophobic society. And you know what, the benefits issue is one thing, but that happens relatively in private. That's your relationship to your government. When you're able to go out socially and say, this is my husband, right, or this is my wife, and have people know that your relationship is respected by the church, by the nation, as fully equal to a straight relationship, that matters, right? We are not only fighting for legal equality. We want to transform society, a truly transformative change, change that shifts the very foundations of our society. This is the change that lasts, and this is the change to which we are called. Society turns on the outcome of this debate, a debate not about your marriage, but about the purpose for marriage in society, whether it is upheld as a model for more married moms and dads or becomes a megaphone for more same-sex activism. The foundations of society are being shaken. Future generations will never hear that a mom and dad matter when having a mom and a dad are merely presented as optional. Redefining marriage undermines society. But strong marriages shelter everything. That's why we work to strengthen and protect marriage because marriage strengthens and protects us. potential and purpose in Christ. Politic is not a church, but it is a ministry of help to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. I want you to consider the following information, and then please prayerfully consider partnering with Papa Pig as we support many, many others. God bless you today.
Since 2003, the Lord has been doing extraordinary things through Papa Pick with its mandate, mission, and vision to provide help and support to the body of Christ, people in need, ministries, and service organizations through spiritual retreats and advances, youth summits, summit conferences for servant leaders from all walks of life, critical conference panels, scholarships for students, prayer and intercession trainings, books, worship resources, prayer and intercession through worship demonstrations, and the weekly live TV outreach known as Calling to Know God. Prayerfully consider supporting unity in the body of Christ with your gift of any size and partner with Papa Pick. Visit papapick.org and give today. Welcome back. You're watching Calling to Know God. I know you must be uh, greatly impacted by that last segment uh, we shared with you uh, regarding the state of marriage in this country. Uh, but we're now getting ready to introduce our panel. I want, but I think it would be apropos for me to state this. In that we're ending um, what's called Black History Month in this country. I've said a couple of times this month, and I'll say it again, the face of the civil rights movement in this country is Dr. Martin Luther King. But what's interesting is, uh, in many of our public school books, it's not even mentioned uh, that he, is, uh, he was a pastor and a preacher and a man of God before he became the civil rights leader. I've done my research, and I just want to say this, and we'll move on because I can't wait to introduce the panel tonight. I've done my research, and you could challenge me and you could disagree with me, but I've done my research. Martin Luther King lived, stood, and died for three primary things. He wasn't a perfect man, but neither was David in the Bible. He lived, he stood, and he died for the freedom of religion, not just the freedom of worship. Freedom of worship is that which takes place within the four corners of the, the house, in your prayer closet, in the church, but not in the streets. The freedom of religion means your right to go out into the public square and share your faith. Every time he grabbed a microphone, he not only spoke up for the rights of the oppressed, but he also preached the gospel that he believed in under the anointing. The second thing he lived, stood, and died for was the sanctity of life from the womb to the tomb. In our society today, there's much legislation going forth which seems to devalue human life if it's Early, early, conceived in the womb, they say it doesn't have any rights. If it's a 90-year-old who may not be able to work anymore and produce an income from which the government can take taxes, that person becomes ill, then there's a, a tendency to kind of want to take them off life support or to not uh, pay for this surgery or that, this, that, or the other. So Dr. Martin Luther King stood for the sanctity of life and that all life has equal dignity in the sight of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You can research it. I've researched it. And then the final thing he lived, stood, and died for was the biblical definition of marriage between one man and one woman. Amen? And so we can kind of twist things, but as believers, we need to make certain that we inform our children of the whole story of our leaders and the people that we want them to look up to because many if not most of these people were Christian believers. I want to introduce our panel tonight. You know the Bible says that there are not many fathers, we have not many spiritual fathers in the body of Christ. Well uh, in some instances that's true uh, but I happen to be a person who I've had um, at least four that I could put my hands on directly. I have many spiritual mentors, many elder brothers, but I have two spiritual fathers that have gone to be with the Lord, Wade Taylor uh, and uh, Apostle Turnell Nelson. And in this season of my life, I have two that are still living, praise God, and uh, they're with us tonight. The first one is uh, Prophet Ralph LeBlanc. He's also a big brother, but he's also a prophet apostle. And uh, he's in the States. His hands are always close to me. His fingerprints are on me. And then the other individual 
is here tonight from all the way across the other side of the world, Cape Town, South Africa, who happens to be Prophet LeBlanc's spiritual father as well as mine. But they're also here with their beautiful brides because we want to celebrate marriage tonight and we'll get to it. But Prophet Ralph and Mother Gloria LeBlanc, who's also here with them, just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. So without further ado, I'll start with Prophet. Prophet, introduce yourself to the people as well as your lovely wife. Look into that camera. Mm. Good evening. My name is Prophet Ralph LeBlanc. Uh, my wife, Gloria, is sitting next to me. It's a great opportunity to be here in front of you and to share some of our lives with you and what God has been doing in our lives and how faithful he has been to us. Amen. And Mother, won't you say hello and look at that camera right there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gloria LeBlanc, the wife of Prophet Ralph LeBlanc. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and most of all, it's an honor to say that we have been married for 50 years. Amen. That's almost unheard of in today's society. When you say you've been married 50 years, they look at you and say, what? How did you do that? <laughs> and the younger generation, does, it doesn't matter to them. They get into a relationship, and they want to throw you away if it doesn't work and move to the next one. But only if they knew the same baggage they had in the first relationship if it's not resolved, they will take it to the next relationship. Praise Thank the Lord. You. And our next special guest, just to the left of her, is Dr. Vincent Valentine from Cape Town, South Africa, Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries International, and his beautiful wife, Sister Arlene. Please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Vincent Valentine, and I uh, have the privilege of uh, ministering in different parts of the world, in different uh, continents and countries, according to the grace of God that has appeared unto me. I'm privileged to have my wife with me, Arlene, on this uh, trip. She's not able to always travel with me, but uh, this is a very special occasion for us to be together. And um, we have been married for 32 years, and we thank God for that, because even though we do not have come up to 50 yet. <laughs> <laughs> we pretty much on our way. Uh, we thank God for His grace that has appeared unto us even in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister Arlene, would you like to say hello? Hi, I'm Arlene Valentine, married to Vincent Valentine. I'm so happy to be here and to share this uh, awesome time with you. And um, yeah, it's glad to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we have a couple of questions that have already begun to come in, and as you could probably see, we have a live audience tonight as well uh, from different parts of uh, locally, different parts of the area, and uh, even one or two out-of-state persons. Uh, but before we go to this next break, I just want to pose this question, and we'll just pick it up on the other side. It's come in. It's a very basic question. How is marriage to reflect Christ in his church? How is marriage to reflect Christ and his church? And um, I'll take this last minute and perhaps let Apostle Dr. No, Valentine, a prophet, I, I either one. We've already decided. <laughs> you take that one. Okay. Well, we have to understand that Christ uh, has a family, and out of that family is a bride that comes. And one of the things that uh, I can attribute to Mother Gloria and I's marriage of 50 years is that we have both been asking and inquiring of the Lord to teach us how Christ loves His church. And Christ loves His church to the extent that He laid His life down for His church so that she was actually birthed uh, in His death. Mm. And, and this is what has to happen in marriages. We have to lay our lives down individually so that the two can become one. Praise the Lord. That was an awesome response. We'll pick it up again at the other side of the break. You're watching Calling to Know God. Pick up your phone. Give us a call. 225-774-7790. We'll see you at the other side of the break. Ken Bob, president and founder of People of Potential and Purpose in Christ. Public is not a church, but it is a ministry of help to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. 
want you to consider the following information. And then please prayerfully consider partnering with Papa Pink as we support many, many others. God bless you today. Since 2003, the Lord has been doing extraordinary things through Papa Pick with its mandate, mission, and vision to provide help and support to the body of Christ, people in need, ministries, and service organizations through spiritual retreats and advances, youth summits, summit conferences for servant leaders from all walks of life, critical conference panels, scholarships for students, prayer and intercession trainings, books, worship resources, prayer and intercession through worship demonstrations, and the weekly live TV outreach known as Calling to Know God. Prayerfully consider supporting unity in the body of Christ with your gift of any size and partner with Papa Pick. Visit papapick.org and give today. Amen. Welcome back. You're watching Calling to Know God. We'll go right into another question. Why should marriage be celebrated by the whole community? And a subpart to that question, what's the connection between the couple's marriage and the community they live in? So why should marriage be celebrated by the whole community? And what's the connection between the couple's marriage and the community they live in? Well, firstly, we have to understand that when God gave the commandments um, through Moses, what God was doing, uh, he was structuring civilization through the laws, the Ten Commandments that Moses gave to the people of Israel. Uh, many civilizations, many countries still practice the Ten Commandments in their constitution, even though it's enshrined in their laws in order to bring about a stable society. Uh, marriage is therefore given as God's antidote to chaos. Because when uh, we are faithful and committed in marriage, we produce offspring that learn how to live uh, in a family that is stable, and from there they learn how to function properly, both emotionally and spiritually and psychologically, and therefore family produce, as a gift to society, stable individuals that is able to be productive and is able to carry society forward uh, in a productive manner. So for that reason, uh, when I look upon someone's uh, marriage that's stable, I can see from that as a gift to me in society um, the privilege to live peaceably mm -hmm. because they didn't produce someone that's dysfunctional that would actually, in, through some criminal activity, uh, threaten my well-being uh, in society. Mm -hmm. So. From that point of view, it's not just uh, advantageous as a believer or as a Christian, but to the wider society. Right. Uh, for that reason, one should celebrate marriage because it's God's concept of producing stable societies. Amen. And stable societies uh, formulate and are the foundation of governments. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. God is the author of governments yeah. and order. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on that? That's an excellent question, ladies. So, Prophet? No, I'm good. Okay. Now, what's the connection between a couple's marriage and the community they live in? Kind of like, I guess, looking at it more uh, locally now, from a, from a local standpoint. Prophet, anyone? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that society, we often look at the church, and the church is made up of a family and what we're actually bringing into the church is a reflection of what's at the home. Mm. And that's what we're bringing in. And, and the thing that I think we, is most important is that we have to make sure that we don't deviate from the Word of God, which is the pattern of God. So if you're not reading the Word and you're not conscientious about what God has to say about a particular subject, then, then you, there's a tendency for you to follow your own mind. Mm -hmm. and, and the Scripture clearly states that when we come into Christ and we come into the knowledge of the Word, we are supposed to have our minds renewed by the Word. Right. So 
our mind needs to be transitioned. It needs to be changed. It's not based upon what mama said, what daddy said. It's not based on what the government said. It's purely based upon what does God say. Because there's so many times that there's actually a conflict between what God says and what mom and daddy said or what the world is saying. Or, so we have to allow our, our mind to be transformed, to be renewed into what God has to say so that we can begin to reflect what God has to say. And then if we reflect what God has to say, then it can't help but reflect what's happening in my home and the stabilization of my home, and we automatically bring, we're bringing one of two things into the house of the Lord. We're bring, bringing destruction or, or we're bringing unity. And, right. and, and we have men and women of God that's teaching us in the house of the Lord how to live according to God's pattern right. so, that, so that we are a true reflection of what God's original intent and what God's original pattern was for marriage. Exactly. And I, I was um, reading something from Roman history recently. I was also looking at uh, when Pompeii was uh, destroyed by a volcano. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went through some of the relics. And, uh, but then also Dr. Ken Jones, who's um, well, one of the Papa Pig board members, has done some research. And he was looking at some of the writings between, I think, Nero and a friend of his who he had installed as a governor somewhere. And... Uh, there was an issue about some Christians wanting to uh, meet and worship, but not necessarily worship um, the emperor as God. And so those people were brought before this man's court. So he wrote uh, the emperor Nero, asked him what his thoughts were. And in his letter to Nero, he indicated that. But you know, they, they, they're really peaceable people. They, they're the most productive people in our society. They're not troublemakers. They pay their taxes. And it was interesting that that was in the colloquy between the two of them. Yeah. And so it's a God thing. You know, if they're, they're Christians who follow God's way, and even if you're a non-believer, the Bible says God reigns on the just and the, the unjust. unjust. And Jesus said in the New Testament that, you know, the children of the world are wiser sometimes than the children of the kingdom. And so just what these two great men of God have said, uh, traditional biblical marriage uh, has a strong governmental interest, and the government should have an interest in applying God's law. And you can see historically, whether you're a Buddhist, uh, whatever, you know, a non-believer or whatever, if you study history, you will see that those societies that had their rules and their laws based upon uh, the principles of the Bible, starting with the Ten Commandments, are societies that p were prosperous, that were strong, that were blessed. So there's a lot of common sense, if you will, that comes out of the, the Father or the Ancient of Days. He knows best. And uh, many people, non-believers, have done well by applying the principles of God, even though they're not saved. And so... Uh, and I will, I will finally say this. There was a, a guest on a couple of weeks ago who made an a, a interesting observation. And this is not to condemn Christians who may be shacking up, just maybe to convict you a little bit. You know, there are a lot of Christians who are just compromising. They, they, they won't make the commitment. They won't get married. They perhaps are living together, or as they used to call it when I was a kid, shacking up. But the interesting thing about it, he says he's noticed that the, the, those folks who live gay and lesbian <coughs> lifestyles seem to be pursuing and beating on the doors to quote unquote become married and the people in the, the so called house of God or the saved ones seem not to find any value in it and there's something wrong with that and so we need to come under conviction we need to repent as well in the house of God amen, amen. we'll see you at the other side of the break you're watching calling to know God pick up your phone call 225-774-7790 Hello there, I'm Ken Fowle, President and Founder of People of Potential and Purpose in Christ. Papa Pick is not a church, but it is a ministry of health to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. 
want you to consider the following information. And then please prayerfully consider partnering with Papa Pig as we support many, many others. God bless you today. Since 2003, the Lord has been doing extraordinary things through Papa Pick with its mandate, mission, and vision to provide help and support to the body of Christ, people in need, ministries, and service organizations through spiritual retreats and advances, youth summits, summit conferences for servant leaders from all walks of life, critical conference panels, scholarships for students, prayer and intercession trainings, books, worship resources, prayer and intercession through worship demonstrations, and the weekly live TV outreach known as Calling to Know God. Prayerfully consider supporting unity in the body of Christ with your gift of any size and partner with Papa Pick. Visit papapick.org and give today. Praise the Lord. We're live and on the air. We're back. We have a question from our live audience. And uh, if we can get the camera hmm. to go to him, we'll go ahead and let him pose that question. Go ahead. Wait, hmm. a, wait on a second. Let him get you. There you A little. Hold on. They're, they'll get it right in a second. There you are. I'll just ask your question now. Okay. Um, my question is, what impact do you think divorce has had uh, on our society trying to redefine marriage? Okay. All right. I, uh, and I guess his question is, if we can come back to the panel, is, is similar to one that I, uh, that I have that was submitted in writing as well. Uh, and it has to do with what are the reasons why the divorce rate in the church is described as being sometimes higher than that in secular society. But his question is, I guess, um, has the fact that there's been a high divorce rate in the church also strengthened uh, the cause of those who want to change the definition of marriage in the first place. Any takers? I think that the the attempt or the temptation to deviate from a commitment uh, made in marriage is the same as any other person who's tempted to have a relationship um, in terms of uh, outside of marriage, whether that be um, homosexual or lesbian. As a married person, I face temptations to be unfaithful to my wife. And in the same way that a person that wants to have a lesbian or a homosexual relationship have temptations to have a relationship of that kind. I have the same obligation as any other person to choose whether I succumb to the temptation or whether I choose to be faithful to my spouse. So the difference really is, uh, there is no difference whether um, I accept that, uh, that, that um, uh, to succumb to the temptation. So to come back to the question then, has divorce um, given others the liberty to believe that there is no value in marriage and therefore um, uh, we can choose to redefine marriage and redefine society? The answer is no. Just because someone chooses not to remain in a relationship doesn't mean that God's value for that relationship no longer exists. It's a choice that we make. In, just as we make choices of all kinds all day long mm -hmm. in the society that we live. So I cannot therefore believe or begin to believe that because someone else chose to do a certain thing that it validates me in what I'm doing. All right, so it remains personal in some sense, but it also remains societal because in the end it all impacts society. Um, in the final analysis. So sin is sin, and one sin does not justify another. No. Amen. Well, here's a more basic question, and I'll repeat it. What are the reasons, do you think, why in many instances it's reported that the divorce rate 
in the church is sometimes greater than that outside of the church. And that's true. I've seen some of, of some of the statistics. What do you think attributes to that? I'd like to, I'd like to address that. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up in home, mm -hmm. and my grandmother raised me from the day I was born up until ninth grade, but there were morals in the home. And when I talk about morals, I'm talking about being married for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. There were things that she said to me. She said, when you get married, she said, those words that you repeat till death do us part. She said, that's, that's real. So to me, I was not even able to entertain the divorce, the spirit of divorce. In my mind, I knew once I married, that was it. So whatever I had to overcome, I had to overcome it. It was no such thing as I'll get out of this relationship and go to another. That was unheard of back in the generation of my parents. You did what you needed to do. You went through whatever you had to go through in order to be successful in the relationship. So it's a matter of thinking. You know, this is it. This is for a lifetime. And I have to be committed enough to realize that when I stand before God, that I'm making a covenant, not only with my husband, but I'm making a covenant with God. So you have to realize and purpose, I don't want to fail God. I want to be pleasing to him. And if I'm in this relationship, I am going to work through whatever I have to work through. I'm not entertaining any thoughts of divorce. That was the morals that I was taught. And I still believe very strongly in that. Right. And prophet? We're living in a throwaway society. What influences that? Media mm. and thinking. Interesting. And what we're perpetuating. If you break, if your television breaks today, it's very hard to find a TV repairman or your refrigerator. We're, and even people, as you alluded to in the beginning, when you get up in age, 80, 90, and you're non-productive. So we're living in a throwaway society. And, and, and because of that, we have actually children in the home are going to, what my wife was saying, is that we're not being taught whatever morals is being taught or whatever morals the children are seeing in the home that's what they're perpetuating so it's a, it's a perpetuation and it's either a perpetuation or an ex acceleration in terms of what God says or it's a spiraling effect against what God says and, and you have to want to have uh, a conscientiousness of pleasing God, want to know what God has to say about an issue. The majority of society today, they don't care what God has to say about an issue. Now, the question was centered around the church. Yeah. So I would take it to say that this impact, this uh, philosophy in society, in, in, in today's uh, society, if you will, is really, really penetrating the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Apostle, what do you think? Yeah, I want to say that we don't really understand that God is a multi-generational God who's interested in me raising up the next generation to produce perpetuity of the purposes of God in the earth. It seems that God have to go after new people in every generation because the prior generation failed in producing godly offspring. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it delays the purposes of God. It delays the final establishment of the kingdom of God because we don't understand that God is after household salvation. Even the, the, the attempts to evangelize has been directed at individuals. And when that individual responds, we are willing to receive them as an individual and the church, mm -hmm. not realizing that they are a part of a family that needs to be evangelized mm -hmm. because the scriptures seems to teach household salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. We are too ready to go after the next individual instead of standing still and laboring in that one family mm -hmm. to bring them into mm -hmm. Christ 
so that they can produce godly seed on the earth mm -hmm. and from that that we can begin to build with families uh, that's why we have the high rate of people leaving congregations because it's very easy to leave as an individual mm -hmm. but you don't uproot a family easily right. because that family has emotional psychological and spiritual ties with other believers in that church right. and for that reason one of the antidotes for this tremendous transitions that we see in church are people leaving congregations is to build with families build with families so it would be fair for me to conclude then your answer in addition to the excellent responses we've already received is that when you go back to the bare basics yeah our modus operandi, our method of evangelizing, uh, that which motivates us, our focus in evangelizing, mm -hmm. needs to get back to the scriptural model. And yeah. you know what, what I'm reminded of while you were speaking? In the New Testament, I think it's in Hebrews, it says that God the Father sought out and chose Abraham to cut a covenant because he knew Abraham would teach his children. That's right. There it is, right there again. Mm -hmm. And it's confirmed in the New mm -hmm. Testament. Mm -hmm. We'll go to the break. We'll see you on the other side of the break. You're watching Calling to Know God. Hello there. I'm Ken Fowler, President and Founder of People of Potential and Purpose in Christ. Public is not a church, but it is a ministry of health to the body of Christ in service to the kingdom of God. I want you to consider the following information, and then please prayerfully consider partnering with Papa Pig as we support many, many others. God bless you today. Since 2003, the Lord has been doing extraordinary things through Papa Pig with its mandate, mission, and vision to provide help and support to the body of Christ, people in need, ministries, and service organizations through spiritual retreats and advances, youth summits, summit conferences for servant leaders from all walks of life, critical conference panels, scholarships for students, prayer and intercession trainings, books, worship resources, prayer and intercession through worship demonstrations, and the weekly live TV outreach known as Calling to Know God. Prayerfully consider supporting unity in the body of Christ with your gift of any size and partner with Papa Pick. Visit papapick.org and give today. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. Here's another. Actually, we have a comment from a, one of our call-ins. Uh, we like to submit those. This is from Edwin in Baton Rouge, and here's his comment. The divorce rate is high in the church because people are not truly saved. If they are not obeying Christ, then they are called false converts. They have not truly been saved. And again, that's a comment from Edwin in Baton Rouge. Here's a question from our live audience, but someone's shy, so they sent it in right. And this is a question quickly for uh, Ms. Sister Arlene Valentine from Cape Town, South Africa. Question, what do you think is the number one or major thing that causes marriages to fail? Well, um, I think it first starts with, uh, with, with uh, the parents in the home raising their children and uh, um, and the way they they raise their children and bring up their children uh, um, and disciple th their children, it, it all starts with the with the parents mm -hmm. in how they raise their children and and what they teach their children mm -hmm. and, and 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 to live by biblical principles. Um, I mean, we we ha uh, have uh, three daughters, and uh, um, our, our one daughter is getting married now. And um, it's difficult in this time to uh, 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 um, to raise your cho your children the way that that uh, uh, um, in the in the kingdom way, you know. Because previously we uh, we believed in, in in dating, and we taught our children we don't believe in in dating. We believe in courtship. Amen. So. Um, and, and, and it was, was difficult to implement it because the church, uh, 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 they weren't used to this kind of, the, I mean, uh, even with us, we weren't used to this. We, we dated several people and, uh, uh, um, and then eventually we, 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 uh, uh, we don't even marry that person. Mm -hmm. But we taught our children, uh, uh, we, we don't 
we don't do dating, we do courtship. Yeah, and, uh, uh, um, and we disciple our children, and when they, when they get married, they, they, when they want to get married, uh, uh, um, we, we, they, co they come to us, and, they, uh, and we talk about it. And uh, um, so th th I think the, the main thing is it starts with, with the parents. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, um, Praise it God. It starts with the, with the parents and how they raise their children. Right. Okay, now we have in the last minute here, uh, help us to understand the word submit found in Ephesians 5.22 concerning marriage. Why has there been so much difficulty for many women with regard to submission and headship? I'm going to take 20 seconds and say this. It's not just the women that have a problem with submission, with understanding submission. I believe the men also have that, uh, a problem with that understanding. I learned recently through one of my spiritual mentors that the word submit also means to oppose. You know, So my wife, in submitting to me, when she disagrees with something, you know, she helps me by respectfully saying, let me submit this to you. I think you're missing it. Pray about it. That's also submission, men. I just want to say that. Apostle Prophet, and we got about 20 seconds, because literally we're about to go off the air. Mother, submission. Submission, I believe that word sub comes from getting underneath. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get underneath and support, the mate. Right. That speaks volumes. Right. The mate. And it the goes mate. both ways. And it goes Submit both ways. So, I mean, you get under the thing. You may Lord. not agree. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to end by prayer. Before we go off the air, I want to invite you at home. You're going to see some words on the screen. You're going to hear some music. Prayer and intercession through worship. Thank you for joining us. We see you soon. Send us a call. Let's pray. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that in our weak, yielded vessels tonight, somehow you have accomplished your purpose, and your purpose is. Thank you, Lord, for the questions that came. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the answers that you led us to try to give. glorious ambition for my life To know and follow hard after you give to me Give me one pure and holy passion. Give me one magnificent obsession. Give me one glorious ambition for my life. To know and follow hard after you. To know and follow hard after you. To grow as your disciple in the truth. This world is empty, pale, and poor. Compared to knowing you, my Lord, lead me on, and I will. is proudly supported in part by people of potential and purpose in Christ, Baker Printing, Louisiana Consultants, LLC, Tadora Plumbing, Project Stars of Abounding Love Ministries of Baton Rouge, and the Fob Law Firm. Special thanks to Billy Ann's flowers and gifts. Join us again next week, same place, same time, same channel, same phone number on Calling to Know God.